feet are the foundation of adventure riding. So let's talk about how to use our feet, where to put our feet, and what we should be wearing on our feet. When riding our adventure bikes, there's two basic foot positions that we use. One is a center foot. This is more natural and feel. And there's a ball of the foot. And this is what I teach new riders is a default riding position. There's a couple reasons for this. When you're back on the balls of the feet, when your feet move around with the terrain, you're less likely to accidentally catch a control and activate it, or in this case, drag the rear brake and cause damage when you don't realize you're dragging the brake. The other nice thing about moving back and beginning with the balls of the feet is it allows you to more naturally pull the toe in tight against the frame. If the toe comes out outside of the foot peg or it flares out, two things can happen. If you're in an off-road technical environment, you're more likely to catch a log or a rock or something that can pull your foot off, or worse yet, can rotate the leg and cause well, we don't want to talk about what it'll cause, but it's not good. Now, the performance benefits of being back and behind this peg has to do with where the ankle joint is. Because the ankle joint is farther behind the peg, it has more room to flex. And this means that as you're moving up and down in different terrains, it allows the whole body to float much better. The less that ankle is involved in that movement, the more your upper body has to remain fluid and that often requires more skill and experience so being back and behind puts you in a better position for that it also reduces your fatigue when riding so the ideal riding locations to do this will be gravel roads long dirt roads places where you want to relax if you're standing up on pavement this is going to be the most relaxed it's going to require the least amount of energy and one of the tips that i often give riders is to just let that heel relax and let your foot drop back in behind i prefer to be up on my toe neither one is correct or incorrect try both of them and see what works best for you on the shifter side the advantage of being on the ball of the foot is just that you can move back and forth without accidentally knocking the bike into neutral or into a gear that you don't want Riding center foot is often reserved for technical riding. So riding the sand, rocks, uh, technical trails, things like that. And the reason I, I mentioned this is again, you lose some of that flexibility of, of moving the body and allowing you to be a weightless rider, but it does put you directly over the controls. Now the advantage here is if I need them, I'm already on top of it. The challenge is twofold. One, because I'm on top of the controls, it's much easier to accidentally activate the brake or to accidentally change or shift or knock it in neutral. The second issue here is that when you're center foot, you're far more likely to flare the toe out to get away from the controls, putting you in that dangerous position where you can get pulled off the pegs. So if you're using center foot, it's important if you flare out that you keep it very, very minimal just enough to clear the controls so you're not hitting them and that you're very aware of the terrain around you so you don't accidentally get caught. Another benefit of being center foot is just the ability to move the body back and forth very rapidly. Because I'm center foot, I can roll back onto the back of the foot peg or I can roll forward onto the front of the foot peg. So my body is able to flow back and forth very, very rapidly and I'm able to get to the controls very, very rapidly. When I'm first teaching riders standing posture on a motorcycle, I introduce the concept of wedging. And wedging is simply taking the knees and wedging them into the bike where the bike flares into them naturally. The foot position is critical to this whole wedging concept. If I use the balls of the feet on the peg, it means that I can wedge against the bike and against the front edge of the foot peg. This allows my upper leg to stay nice and straight or vertical, so I'm using less energy and I don't end up in a squatting position where I'm burning lots of energy and wearing myself out. So another benefit of riding on the balls of your feet is you can exaggerate the wedging to get locked in on the bike. You take your toes and you point them into the bike so you're pigeon-toed. That pigeon-toed drives those knees into the bike, giving you a more secured clamp or attachment to the bike. That also ensures that your feet don't end up hanging out in a dangerous situation where they can capture things. But when you move into a center foot position, it pulls those knees out and you end up with more of a touch against the bike rather than a squeeze. 
And that's very good if you're an expert or skilled rider and in technical environments. But for basic riding, it's much better to be wedged in tight and locked in on the motorcycle. So I have three of the most common boots chosen by adventure riders. So I'm going to start off with the best boot as far as safety is concerned, and that is using a motocross style boot. And what makes this boot so ideal for adventure riding has to do with how stiff the sole is on the bottom. So when you're on that foot peg and you're standing, it doesn't flex at all which means you have a nice flat platform whether you're on the balls of the feet or whether you're riding center foot. The upper is going to have very significant support. So again, it doesn't move left or right. It doesn't move forward or back. So if I step off the bike and it's a loose surface, I don't twist my ankle or break my lower leg bone. That would be a bad thing. The other thing I'm looking for on a boot like this to make it ideal for adventure riding specifically is I want a very narrow toe box at the front. That narrow toe box is going to make it a lot easier for shifting, not only off-road, but when we're on the road. So you can get underneath the shifter and on top of it much, much easier. The reason that this is not the universal boot for adventure riders is it's not necessarily the most comfortable boot for walking in. Because this doesn't flex, it's like walking around in ski boots. So I get a lot of people that they don't want to wear this, but it is the one that provides the most control on the motorcycle and the most protection. It is the best style boot for riding your adventure bike. Big surprise, adventure boots are the most popular boot for adventure riders. What makes these boots so popular is that they're much more comfortable to ride in. They flex at the toe, so they're much better for walking. They flex at the ankle, so it doesn't make you feel like you're wearing a ski boot. But those are the same features that make it less ideal for off-road. Because of that flexibility in the upper, uh, the upper shaft of the boot, it means you're more likely to twist an ankle or cause damage there, even though they do have protection on the shins and usually some kind of ankle protection. That same flexibility for walking means that if you were to hit a rock or something on the trail, you're more likely to bend that foot and to damage the, the metal tarsals or break your toes. The other challenge with this boot is if you do a lot of standing on the motorcycle, this sole, which is relatively stiff, is not as stiff as the off-road boot, the dedicated off-road boot. And so there's more flexibility in here that causes greater fatigue. So, it's a good touring boot. It's an outstanding touring boot, but it is not ideal for riding off-road. Just say no. This boot does not belong on a motorcycle while you're riding. It's too flexible at the toe. There's no protection here, no protection at the ankles. When you're standing on the bike, there's complete and total lack of support, which will create a ton of fatigue. Save this boot for walking around the campsite. So the boots you choose as an adventure rider, well, the choice is up to you. You can have the ultimate protection and control, or you can combine some street comfort and adequate off-road protection. It's your choice.